In an earlier lesson, I briefly discussed the live chat plugin and how it's useful when you need to provide a more personalized level of human support to your bot users. In this video, I'll be covering the live chat plugin in a little bit more depth and providing some tips and tricks along the way. So one of the key uses of the live chat plugin is putting it on the default answer block here. As a refresher, the default answer is the message that you want to send users who are typing things that the bot doesn't understand, things that aren't set up in the AI tab. It's a fallback response. So I can click the plus button here to add the live chat plugin. And what that'll do is anytime the user gets confused, the bot doesn't understand them, we're going to automatically send them to the live chat tab so that our human agents can respond as needed. Of course, you can edit all the settings here, what copy you want to use when they're starting and ending a live chat session, the timeout period, and you can also subscribe to get alerts when a new live chat session has begun so that you can respond as quickly as possible. Another option that you have for initiating a live chat on the user side of things, in addition to the default answer, is in the Setup AI tab. So you see I've already set up a keyword here where the user's saying something to the effect of, I want to talk to a human agent. Remember to make these keywords as precise and as close to reality as possible. Don't just use general keywords here. And then we can connect this to a block, for example, and we could link this to a live chat block that we'll create. We could just link it to the default answer technically, but I wouldn't recommend that. So we've created this live chat block. If I double click it, as you could imagine, we're going to add a live chat plugin here. So it'll automatically send those people to the live chat tab and we can adjust the same settings as needed. Now, one other option that you have here as well is in the configure tab. This is something we've also touched on a little bit earlier in the course. If I scroll down to the persistent menu, this menu is something that will be persistent and always available to the user. So for example, we could add an option here, depending on if we really want to intentionally increase the volume of our live chats, we could add something here like talk to human agent, link this to the live chat tab as well. So these are just a couple options that you have adding the live chat plugin to the default answer, setting up an AI keyword, and using the persistent menu to show users that they also have an added layer of personalization with the live chat. Now, a couple more things to mention. In the live chat folder, this is what you'll see, of course. You have the active folder for conversations that require human assistance, so anybody who is in that live chat plugin currently or anybody who you have manually assigned from the bot only folder to the active folder. And then you have, of course, the bot only folder. So these are the conversations being fully automated by the bot. In this case, there are none because I've interacted with all the users and they are in the closed folder, meaning we've they've interacted with the bot at one point, but then they interacted with a human and now those conversations have been determined to be closed by the human agent. So let's use an example here. I'm going to go into the bot and I'll type in, I want to talk to a human agent, for example. I've done that before, so let me type it again. Okay, so now the live chat session has been initiated. I can see that conversation here in the active folder. Again, these are all the threads that require human assistance. And now, of course, I, as the operator, can intervene and say, how can I help you? The bot's, of course, not going to interrupt if we have anything set up on the default answer. And then I can respond, you know, I need help with X, Y, and Z. So there we go. When that conversation is complete, the admin can simply click leave and stop live chat and it'll go back to that closed folder so you don't have to worry about responding to this conversation and it's very clear what conversations need assistance and which ones don't. Two other key things to mention here. One is the attributes that you can set up within the live chat folder. So this is really neat because you have this level of personalization to segment users who are in a live chat. So say for example that your customer is talking with one of your agents and the agent determines that the customer is very warm in terms of a lead. They're asking questions about pricing, for example, about shipping, etc. You could then add an attribute here that says something like lead status 
is warm. And then even though you don't have an attribute set up in the normal automation flow, the agents can set that up for you so that you have more data on your customers, the people interacting with your bot, and you can make more data-informed decisions. So keep that in mind. It's an extremely powerful tool. I'm going to end this live chat here and show you one final piece of live chat, which is super valuable, and that is teammates, which I'll talk more about in the next lesson as well. So what you can do here is invite multiple people to your bot so they can interact with it, make changes, etc. And there are different roles here, different levels of authority, if you will. So if I click invite a teammate, you'll see there are these different roles that I can add them as. The one that's relevant here is live chat operator. So if I click that, I can then send an invite link to anybody with a Facebook account who wants to respond to messages. Of course, the beauty of this is that they'll only have access to sending messages and they can't make other changes to your bot. So Keep this in mind, you have a way to restrict the permissions for your bot, and this is a great way to invite human agents to your bot so that they can manage conversations and ultimately increase your sales and help your business.